Merry Christmas, I'm Tommy Moore from the Bartitsa Lab and in this particular video I'm going to talk about chancery and striking. Now chancery is an old bare knuckle boxing term based around an old court system. If you're in chancery, a notoriously unfair court system, you're essentially fucked. Well that's the same kind of emotion we're trying to elicit here. When you're in chancery you are grabbing an opponent and then you are striking them. You are grabbing and striking or you are grabbing and throwing but in its original pugilistic sense, I'm grabbing you to put you in a position of inferior balance, inferior structure, so that I can continue to strike, damage, and end you. So putting people in chancery is a big deal in traditional boxing, in traditional pugilism. And I'm going to talk you through some of the reasons why it's very important to factor into your pugilistic boxing, especially if you're practicing boxing for self-defense or bare boxing for self-defense. There are lots of brilliant usages of chancery, what today people would refer to as dirty boxing. Um, in the bare days, all boxing is dirty boxing. And if it's not dirty, you're not trying hard enough. So, one of the main important factors, when you chin a bastard, bang, he moves. When you try and chin a bastard, but don't land it, odds are he moves. So whether I'm successful or not, he will reposition himself. And if you're a follower of the OODA loop, so to observe, orientate, decide and act, I allow him the ability to reobserve, reorientate, decide, and then maybe his decision is to draw his knife and stab me, to punch me in the face. But when you hit someone, or when you try and hit someone, or you try and enter conflict with someone, they move. And when they move, they reorientate and they allow themselves to get through that decision-making process, which makes him dangerous. One of the best uses of chancery is every time I grab and move you, every time you are moved, shook, rag them out, you have to re-find where the fuck you are and how the fuck you're standing. You have to reorientate where the fuck I am. So. You know where I am here, even with your eyes closed. If we've started the dialogue here, it's a reasonable assumption that I'm still here. If I rag you and move you, you need to refind me and log that in your mind that that ginger bastard is over here now. Okay? So when I rag him, when I move him, when I drag him, when I apply chancery, I reset his OODA loop. When I move him, he has to start that decision making process again. Whereas I have already predetermined. That I can now decide. I've already observed, I've already orientated, I've already decided. All I need to do is act in this instance, punch, strike, throw, run away, whatever I want to do. Okay? So chancery is very important to disrupting his OODA loop. When we're striking each other, even though it's painful and damaging, he typically knows where I am. He can typically, he doesn't need to do a lifetime of Chi Sao up Wudang Mountain. He knows where the fuck I am, because I'm punching him, and he's probably punching me. If, in the midst of my punching, I move him, or I move myself, or I do both, he has to compensate for that. There has to be some gap or lag, which allows me to do some nasty shit, let alone the angles it opens up, because I've used a grapple to move to his side or to his back, which puts me in a position of authority and dominance. So, some of the ways in which chancer is used in traditional bare knuckle boxing. Some of them I can't show you because they rely on arms and all I've got is a bloody coat. But you get the idea. Chancery number one is very, very simple. Essentially, it's a single collar grip. The elbow broadly in line with the solar plexus. The hand around the neck, or for some, around the top of the crown. I'm compressing his head down driving my elbow in, and I'm using this to pull him into strikes, but also to rag him around, to move, reposition, reposition, drag him, move him, keep him very disorientated. The job is to disorientate him, allowing me to strike to best effect. Okay, chancery number one, explosive grab, boom! elbow in tight, reposition, reorientate, and then strike him. Chancery 2 essentially has me have him in this function. I've got Bob rocking at about six foot five at the moment, so he's a big bastard. 
but essentially it's me getting a position of guillotine and also grabbing the opposing bicep tricep. So as you can see here, I'm grabbing his arm and his head. So if you see it, it's almost like an arm in guillotine. I'm putting my body weight on him and again, I'm moving him, striking him, dragging him, striking him, kneeing him, kicking him, dumping him to the ground. So chancery two is this kind of guillotine-ish overhook um, position. I've got his head wrapped around here, I'm driving my forearm into his throat or into his face if I've not quite got the throat. I've linked it up with his arm here, so I've got this grab and I've got this arm free to do nasty stuff such as kidney hammers, which you see in bare knuckle boxing, rabbit punches, you know, look, all manner uppercuts to the body, knees, throws, drops, whatever. So that's chancery two. Chancery one, single arm, and the head, elbow in tight. You pull, push, contract him and move him as you strike. Chancery two, I take him, I pull him under the armpit, I get that position, I lock him in, I put my body weight over the top of him, and then have this hand free to do what is called belaboring. I will belabor the man as befits the situation. Essentially beat the fuck out of him. Chancery three is assuming that I've thrown a hook or a grapple, it's gone relatively wrong. I end up in a position of traditional headlock. And again, this could be pressure against the face or the throat. The throat's better, but sometimes it's the face. And again, it's about how do you do this with base to attack. I don't like this particular version, but you do see in historical pugilism. It's a bit awkward to show you on the bob because he doesn't articulate at the spine, but you get the idea. It's the traditional headlock, taking away air, taking away blood, ragging people around. But I prefer the first two. Chancery one, chancery two. And often they flow into each other rather nicely. In either instance, one of the main things you should be practicing when it comes to your chancery, or holding and hitting, or grabbing and hitting, is to make sure that you're throwing your grabs amidst your strikes. Where I think some of this goes wrong for people, I've got videos talking about chancery elsewhere, where it goes wrong for people, they go, boom, boom, grab. There's a small cognitive, physical, timing gap between punching a cunt and grabbing a cunt. And I think that's where a lot of people end up having their grapple fouled. So they end up in an inferior grapple, as opposed to a superior grapple, or they end up being absolutely mullered on the way in. So again, one of the main things I advise people practice is the ability, one, two, three, you treat your entry to grapples ballistically as strikes. So if you think of it in a pugilistic bare knuckle boxing sense, lead off, rear hand, ballistic chancery as a one, two, three, as opposed to one, two, grab, one, two, three. I've got the ballistic chancery. It's very, very important to practice flowing the ballistic grabs in between your punches. So as you practice your punching combinations, whatever they may be, so whether it's one, one, two, whatever it's likely to be, get used to swapping out a strike for a grab. So uppercut hook is now gonna turn into uppercut chancery three. Boom, boom, do you see? So it's very important to get used to substituting a punch for a ballistic grab. Punch, ballistic grab. These are very important things. And often people forget to do that when they're doing pad work, bag work, partner work. They go, strike, 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 grapple, grapple, grapple. Strike, 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 grapple, grapple, grapple. For us, what we train is the grapple is intrinsically part of the striking cadence, the striking tempo, the striking combination. One, one, two. Then I'm moving. Importantly, once I've achieved the grapple, once I've achieved the chancery, job one is to move him. Because if I move him, we reset the OODA loop. If I chin him and then grab him, but I do not move, he does not need to reobserve, reorientate. He does not need to do those things. If I chin him, grab him and move him, he now needs to find where I am, figure out where he is, decide what to do, and then do it. 
So once you've got that kind of synergy between strikes and grapples, you flow them into your combinations. Uppercut, chancery three, straight, chancery one. Once you've got that, make it your first priority to rag, move, and disorientate that motherfucker. That's really, really important. Some of the areas that fall outside of chancery but are equally relevant is using ghetto judo, being able to use your grips on clothing. What I would say is it's very important to be able to slap grab. So just trying to grab fabric at range under duress is sometimes quite hard to do. And often you fluff it because you close your hand just before you get to that grip. And there are different schools as to whether thumb in, thumb out. I'll leave that for you to decide. One of the best methods I've found is get your hands on target first, so slap the clothing, and then grab afterwards. I find that gives me a much better chunk of clothing. It allows me to make contact without the obvious lunge. You tend to lunge for a grab. Even experienced grapplers, when it comes to clothes grappling, they tend to lunge for it. In this instance, I can strike, boom, slap grab. As soon as I've got that, I've got a really good meaty chunk of clothing. And again, like I always say with chancery, job one, move the cunt, and then hit him. Reset his OODA loop. Very, very, very important. So slap grab, and again, like I was saying for chancery, strike, strike. I treat the grab as if it were a strike. I treat everything about it. Not just grabbing percussively, because people know to do that, but grabbing percussively in the middle of a combination. That's something people don't practice that often. It's very important to get used to doing that with pad work, with bag work, with using the bob, being able to strike into a grapple. Oh, one. Yep. I'm substituting my one, two is now becoming one. My two is exactly the same, but at the end, it's coming with a slap grab as opposed to a punch to his chin. Very important to be able to flow through those things and not have that gap between striking and grappling. So building in your chancery, boom, 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 into your combinations, very important. Building in your ghetto judo into your combinations, boom, boom. I've got this. Try the slap grab, see how it works, just hang a coat up, try it, try and achieve a good grip like this, under duress, get yourself knackered, sometimes you fuck it up. When you slap and then you do it, you often get a really good chunk of clothing, following which, you can manipulate him in any number of arm drags, turning circles, or whatever you want to do. And in reality, we may wish to strike into a chancery so that we can continue the grapple into throws, because that might be our preferred range. If he's a superior striker, the benefit of Bartitsu, a bit like Latter-day Jeet Kune Do is, if I've realized that he's just a top class striker, if he's just hard as fuck, or whether he's a boxer, or whatever he is, even if I've got decent boxing, I'm not going to want to play that game. So if I can get a jab grab, that allows me to maintain a grappling range, which might be his disadvantage. By the same token, I may wish, if he's stronger than me, I may wish or I find it harder to land those strikes at range. But if I get this and I move into a position of weakness, I open up opportunities. Once you wrestle and strike, once you use chancery, once you use ghetto judo, and you grab and you turn people, suddenly a target that was unavailable to you, in this instance behind his ear, is now available to me. So it opens up, it's the magic key. If you imagine when you assault the front of a person, it's like attacking a military base head on. All of his sentries, all of his guard tower, all of his shit is going to be pointing towards me. If, by virtue of chancery, I move him, I get to the least defended parts. So again, it may well be in your interest to grab and manipulate a person to open up areas of striking opportunity that would have been denied to you. So it's very, very important. You may wish to use chancery to maintain a grapple. You may wish to use chancery to open up alternate striking targets. Or you may wish to end up in chancery to run the fuck away. If I pull down sharply on the elbow here, I can get gone. I can flank him. I can move. I can run. 
So there are lots of benefits to building in chancery. I'd say the main thing to work on is make the grabbing part a natural addition to the striking part. Being able to grab mid-striking combination and practice those things and practice the failure drills. If I strike, grab and fuck it up, that's fine. I keep striking until I get a decent clothing grab or a decent shoulder grab or a decent two-on-one or a decent anything. Get used to being able to grab as you strike as opposed to strike, 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 grapple, grapple, grapple. And I think that's something I see rather a lot. There's a small gap, a lot of people do it, but it's a gap that can be fixed if you build into your usual striking training, your usual pugilism training, lead off, slap grab, lead off, ballistic chancery. If you can build those in as naturally as you would throw a one-two, your boxing will be better, your self-defense boxing will be better, and things like Bartitsu or historical self-defense will start to make a lot more sense and a lot more contextualized. The strikes allow themselves the room to end up in a chancery to move, disrupt their OODA loop, and do nasty shit in places they can't defend. But chancery in mid-boxing, it's something they've been doing for hundreds of years. It's very, very useful. You see it manifest itself in MMA today. And you start to see in some of the more modern bare-knuckle boxing, people are starting to open their hands up a bit more to grapple, to move within the rules, within the rule set they're allowed. But in the main, it has to feel, the grapple has to be as ballistic, as fast, and as in tune as your striking combinations. The grabs have to fit in within the combinations to be truly effective, in my opinion. Hope you found that useful. I've been Tommy Moore. Merry Christmas.